Women's Health Month is celebrated every year. It actually starts on Mother's Day and it really is the perfect time yeah. to reevaluate our health risk, to reset our intentions, and to refocus on preventative care. And our guest today is someone who has a deep love and passion for helping women feel like the best versions of themselves. Absolutely, we are delighted to have with us live in the studio, Jessica Baluli, a double board certified women's health and family nurse practitioner. Jessica, thank you so much for being here with us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. You know, before we get into some of the disparities regarding women's health, which there are many, mm -hmm. <laughs> give our audience just kind of a brief overview. We always like to ask people, what is their why? What, what passion drew you into this practice? Well, when I went to nursing school almost 20 years ago, my intention was to work in critical care. That was what I wanted to do. And I got in there, I loved it, and I learned so much about chronic disease, but I really shifted my focus to prevention. And I started to notice how women are disproportionately affected by chronic disease. Mm -hmm. I saw how important their health was to them and also to their families and the communities around them. And Jessica, uh, there is a lot of news popping up, obviously, about a major investment from the U.S. into women's health specifically. We'll share more details about that in just a moment. But first, explain why an investment, especially into women's health, is so needed right now. Right. So we are really behind the eight ball with regard to women's health research. You know, we know that women go through enormous changes throughout our lives and that these changes affect every aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. So when we're thinking about the disparities, they're affecting not only us, but they're also affecting men, mm -hmm. children, everybody. And listen, we gotta keep it real. When you affect the women's health, yeah. you affect everybody else in the right, family absolutely. because we're the caretakers, right? right? Exactly. And, and it has a ripple down effect. I wanna take a look at a really compelling statistic. This is from the World Economic Forum and McKinsey Health Institute. I posted it on Facebook earlier because I just wanted people to really understand what we're talking about when we say the gender gap regarding healthcare issues. This study reveals globally, women live five years longer than men, okay? Mm. But on average, we spend 25% more of our lives in poor health. So Jessica, why is that? And what is the mm. impact of that reality? So there are so many, we could talk about this for hours, <laughs> yeah. but women are more likely to experience poverty. They're more likely to experience poor working conditions. They often um, are diagnosed too late they receive suboptimal treatments often. Um, sometimes they have to make the choice between the cost of health care for them and meeting the needs of their families. You know, the barriers are vast and there is a number of um, reasons that, that women may delay their care, but ultimately, you know, these delays, they make poor outcomes. They, they do. They do. Yeah. And they, um, you know, those, those it's a ripple effect. Generational, generationally, people are going to feel it. Well, and I've yeah. shared this before, when it comes to delays in care, mm -hmm. you know, when Aiden and Nicholas came home, you know, as a new mom with boys 14 months apart, mm -hmm. I put off my mammograms. Now, all of their appointments were on point, but right. I put mine off, right. and literally, it had been five years, Jessica, before mm -hmm. I got that call. My doctor's like, girl, where are you? Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the outcome for me was good. You know, there was a right. little suspicious spot, but things like that, can turn into such big issues. Yeah, it's so easy to forget yourself in the midst of caring for your family. I want to get back to what we were talking about in our previous question, the big investment into women's health. The president recently held a ceremony at the mm -hmm. White House and signed an executive order expanding research, research rather mm -hmm. on women's health and pledges $200 million next year to better understand women's health issues. That includes sexual and reproductive conditions. Uh, we know that Halle Berry, uh, the actress, journalist Maria Shriver, and other notable women are applauding this effort. How much of a game changer can that be in everything from clinical trials and research to your, even your medication and treatment? So we have known for decades that men and women respond to health and disease and aging differently. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until 1993 that the NIH, the National Institute of Health, um, mandated that women be included in federally funded clinical research. So any of those treatments, those studies that um, brought about those treatments, uh, they were based on men. Right. They didn't take into account our biological differences. Yeah. And so there's a lot of health conditions where we are not um, looked at in our complex ways. Um, you know, it also, you know, there's a lot of diseases that aren't 
that men aren't affected by. There's a lot of conditions. We think about menopause and endometriosis. Those symptoms can be debilitating for women. And so, you know, when we think about where this could go, this is money. Research takes money right. and it's expensive to do these things yeah. but you know if the money's not there the nothing moves forward so exactly. hopefully this will help us move forward well and i saw in just researching for the segment a very simple example of inhalers mm -hmm. they're more effective for men because all the studies were done Based on men, right. on men so right. women wow. are prescribed the inhaler, mm -hmm. but it's not nearly as effective for us. So right. that's one area where we see the gender gap. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Jessica's got some great insight about making sure women receive the care that they deserve, but also where to go for trusted information and how the doctor patient provider relationship is changing, right? Yes. Stay with us more on Women's Health Month right after this.